Hey guys, Chris here. Today we have a very chilling story about a bow hunter from Tennessee who is trapped in his tree stand by something that is trying to sneak up on him. That's next. Okay guys, I am in Minnesota today, seeing family and friends, and we are just looking for a nice spot to do the story from. Maybe, maybe head down over to the creek. Okay, so this is called Elm Creek Park Reserve in Minnesota. And it's the largest county park in Hennepin County in the Three Rivers District, 4,900 acres. And this is where I grew up hiking, snowshoeing, and experiencing nature while I, while I was a kid back in the 70s. This park has bike trails, cross-country ski trails, as well as hiking trails, camping, and there's even a, a swimming lake. And there's five five lakes in this park here. It also has eagles, sandhill cranes, deer, beaver, loons, trumpeter swans, and hawks, as well as fox and other critters. And uh, it's really thick brush right here. But yeah, this is where I grew up, learning about nature. And I would come out here as a kid with my brother Dean, our good friends. We would come out here throughout the year. We would sometimes snowshoe, we would ride our bikes, we would hike, we'd hike right from the house. Our house was a few miles to the north of here and back then there was no homes in between. And there was just cornfields and we would hike through the cornfields and sometimes in the fall there would be large flocks of geese in these cornfields. It was pretty incredible to hear all these geese doing their thing. And this is where I learned a lot about nature. Uh, that's why I wanted to mention that. Look at this, look at all these deer tracks right here. Pretty amazing. Okay, we found a nice spot beautiful forest. I saw colors are changing on the canopy before I came in here. I saw some yellow, orange, and even some red just at the very top, just starting to, to break. And I found this nice log to go with my new seat cushion I got from Walmart for eight bucks. Makes me feel a little more comfortable. So for today's beer, we have, this is really interesting. It's called Elliot Ness Amber Lager, check that out. And he's having a beer there at the saloon. <laughs> he is the uh, America's famous federal agent from the 1920s. Uh, this is a 6.0, 6.1 ABV, and that's from the Great Lakes Brewing Company. Amber Lager. Wow, that's crazy. I really like that. It's almost got a citrus citrus taste to it. It's definitely got some amber, but there's like a lager mixed in. It's not bitter at all. And that really is a, it's a good beer. Wow. Elliot, Elliot Ness. <laughs> Cheers. So our story takes place in Tennessee in the Cherokee National Forest, which is 655,000 acres of beautiful forests, whitewater rivers, and over 700 miles of trails. 30 campgrounds as well. Pretty amazing, amazing place. And this is where Shane liked to go deer hunting. He would go bow hunting. He had a specific spot that he went to and he had success there he loved it no one else went there because it was so thick the brush was almost impenetrable it was four five six seven feet high in the brush 
and nobody else wanted to go there because it would be kind of crazy to hunt there and what he figured out he could find a deer trail and then find a good tree above this deer trail and put his portable deer stand there and that's what he did this location was in the Cherokee National Forest like I said it was about one mile from the road not too far and he did this year after year he would go into this location it was usually early in the morning in the fall it was usually foggy misty because this location was a depression within a depression is what he said there was a hill on either side about 600 feet tall and then this little valley and it went like this and then this area where these deer were and this deer trail this game trail was was at the bottom of this and so he went in early in the fall found his tree and he would put these pins in the tree to be able to climb up and he would go about 15 16 feet up and he would attach his portable metal deer stand it's like basically a metal chair that uh, would fold out and there was a metal grate and chains on it and had about 16 inches on the back and it would attach and he could sit up there and be above all this thick brush and look down and wait for the deer to come this particular day September 22nd 2014 Shane parked his truck alongside the road worked his way through the brush and got to his location of his tree his tree stand was already in place and it was misty and foggy that morning he could see about 50 or 60 feet before the the trees just vanished into this mist climbs up into his tree he's sitting up there he's getting in position he ate a snack trail bar and he said when you're sitting in this tree stand and it's foggy and misty like this it's just a very spooky feeling because you're just kind of in your own little world and the fog is out there and you can't see what's going on beyond it and so he's sitting up in this tree stand waiting for a deer to come down the trail and he hears in the forest in front of him to the north of him an owl it starts off kind of low kind of hooting there's a little bit of a screech a little bit louder then he hears another one kind of in succession he's listening to this thinking about this and then he hears a few more and it's getting louder these owl sounds And he's listening to this and he's thinking to himself, this doesn't sound right. He knows the forest, he knows the wildlife, he knows what owl sounds like. He knows what time of day that he usually hears them. He normally doesn't hear more than one at a time. Occasionally, two will be communicating in the forest, but it's usually at night. And he's sitting there in this tree stand looking straight north hearing this and it's getting louder and he's thinking this is not right and it sounds like someone or something is mimicking an owl it's a fake and he's had this chill come over him because he's very he's alone he's by himself solo bow hunting and he's sitting up there and hearing these owls and they're getting louder and then they start spreading out the sound spreads out and it's not way high up in the trees it's just kind of down a little bit lower than where he's at he's about 16 feet up in this tree so when you're in the forest at night during a rainstorm in the fog your mind can play tricks on you or at least feel like it could play tricks on you but Shane knew that whatever this was making this sound, this was not real. The sound was real, but it was portraying something that it was not. And this 
knowing this just gave him this feeling of dread that came over him and he wished he had brought his handgun with him. He didn't. And then he had the thought about climbing down the tree and just exiting through the brush. But he thought it's so thick it would take him so much time to work his way back out and get up to the car. He thought it'd be better at this point just to stay up in this tree. It was a better position. So he waited. And the sound was getting closer and closer. And he still couldn't see anything through the fog. These owl sounds were getting louder. This was escalating and they were coming closer to him. What happened next was beyond belief. He's sitting in this metal tree stand with his back against the tree and his feet on this metal platform and he was trembling. Right at that moment something grabbed his left foot, the back of his foot. It startled him so much he almost jumped out of the tree stand. He turned and looked down and he was staring into the face of this large Sasquatch. He saw these dark eyes staring up at him and almost this grimacing face, this leathery gray skin, just staring at him. He was just in a state of shock. This thing was huge. It didn't hang on to him very long, just a few seconds, just enough to get his attention. And in that moment, he realized that these owl sounds were a distraction so this Bigfoot could sneak up behind him and grab him. And he's sitting there staring at this thing and he's up in this tree like 16 feet. He was thinking to himself, this thing could have easily grabbed him and pulled him out of the tree and destroyed him. And it didn't. And it, this Sasquatch acted almost like it was just letting him know it could if it wanted to, but it didn't. So it just grabbed his foot, the back of his foot. And he's staring at this thing for just a few more moments, right into its face. It was just down to his left. And then it turned and started walking in front of him down the game trail away from him. It took about 10, 12 steps and then just disappeared into the mist. He was in a state of shock. And the sounds that were being made in front of him to the north of him suddenly stopped. It was suddenly completely quiet. And he found himself, this is really, I don't know what the word is even, but he found himself, he peed his pants. He'd never experienced anything like this. It was just a bizarre, surreal experience. He's sitting up in this tree for another hour because he f said it felt like he had taken a narcotic and was in this stupor, this daze. And like time stood still and he didn't really know what was going on. And after about an hour, he found himself climbing down took a deep breath just looking around and he just slowly worked himself out of the forest back to his truck. Shane got back to his truck, opened the door and he was a mess. Just the, the pants and the, his mind was just in this state of confusion and shock. He got himself home, took a shower, went to bed. He didn't sleep hardly at all. The next morning he called work and told him he couldn't make it. He was going to be sick and he was sick for two days. That's what he told them anyways. A few months later he went back to this spot to try to make sense of what had happened to him. And he's looking up at this tree and he thought about when this Sasquatch grabbed his foot. It could have easily dragged him out of the tree and killed him and it didn't. And this always puzzled him. 
and he thought about the height and where he was sitting and where he was looking and he realized this thing had to be nine maybe even ten feet tall and the arm had to be five or six feet long to reach him and grab his foot crazy he looked down at the trail he could see the trail was about two and a half feet wide and this thing was about three times the width of the trail just this huge broad shoulders tapering down this thing had dark gray hair and then white and gray hair around the edges of his face with this leathery gray leathery face and these large eyes these large dark eyes thinking back about looking into the face of the Sasquatch, Shane felt that it had this incredibly evil smile, just staring back at him, grimacing. And then now he thought about, maybe that was just the fear in him. And this thing, the Sasquatch, was maybe considered handsome in its clan, and it was just actually smiling at him. And he just had that thought. He had this to say. When he was walking away from me, I felt as though anesthesia was taking effect before a surgery. That moment in time when suddenly you are drifting off and then you can remember no more. But he knows what he saw and what he experienced and it was real. And it turned out that was the most bizarre day of his entire life. Just a really strange experience and frightening. And that is our story from Shane from Tennessee. I can't imagine being that close to a Sasquatch. But thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it and I appreciate you and appreciate all your comments. Uh, they really encourage me to keep going and do what I'm doing. I, uh, I work really hard on these videos and I got a full-time job and I try to get out in the forest and I got a lot of things to manage to do that but uh, i enjoy it so thank you for watching we'll see you next time as always keep hiking